Well, happy Wednesday morning. Um, glad that you could join me for today's Devo. Uh, today we're going to be reading from the book of, or the, yeah, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 28, particularly verse 19. Um, before we do that, uh, let's let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for this day. It's a beautiful outside, and we thank you for um, all our pets uh, in our life, even though they might aggravate us, uh, but we love them. And thank you for the people in our lives too. And God, we just ask that you you be with us in this this devo and help us understand where maybe we don't understand, and help us uh, give us strength in in places that we need strength. And and it's through you, in Jesus' name, Amen. Well, today we're going to talk about a, a verse that's kind of, you probably pretty well known. Uh, if it's not well known, it, it should be by you. Um, it's probably one of the uh, greatest verses haha, uh, because it is the great commandment. And it says this, <clears throat> it says this in um, the NASB uh, 2020 version, which is the New American Standard Version. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Before we dig into this, um, it's, a, it's an interesting verse, but it, it reminds me of, um, have you ever, when you were younger, you got uh, told to go do something by your parents, you know, like um, maybe go clean the garage or go mow the grass or um, things like that, you know, go clean up your room. And I really, I... I me personally, I hated cleaning my room. I hated uh, cleaning out the garage if we had a garage at the time or, or any of those types of things. I did like to mow, though. But sometimes, you know, when you're a teenager, you get in a hurry. And you, um, maybe you rush it or you don't put your whole heart into it. Not that, you know, work always demands you to put your heart into it. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things uh, where if you were to do it and do it right, then, A, you don't have to do it again, which is awesome until, you know, the grass needs to cut again. But at least you don't have to go and repeat the job over and over and over again. So anyways, but the point of me saying that is, to me, this verse has kind of always been like that from, from God. Like, there's this pressure that, oh, I have to invite so-and-so to church. I have to, you know, tell them all these great things that are going on in my life. And I've not always been the best at this. And, you know, maybe you too. Maybe, maybe you've not always been the best about witnessing to the gospel. But here we are. It's, it's this verse that is... Um, considered the great commandment. It's one of the last things that Jesus told the disciples to do was to go and go forth from there and to make disciples of all the nations. But really, what does that mean? What does it mean to make disciples of all nations? What, is it, what does it really mean to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Well, that's a pretty good question. And throughout my life, I've uh, gr you know wrestled with uh, tried to grasp at different aspects of that. So I think nowadays, though, like if you're in the church, like if church language is your thing, if you've always been in church, even if you were in church and left the church and came back, but in this idea that you were raised up in the church, I think this takes on a different meaning for you and for me because I was raised up in the church too. But for someone that's not familiar with the church, and I don't mean like the people that you go see uh, on the Navajo reservation or, you know, overseas at, on a mission trip. I don't mean like that. I, I mean like right here in your own backyard, in, in this, in your neighborhood. This verse takes on a completely different meaning. And Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples. Well, we don't have to go far off. We can go right here. That's that's one aspect of it. But how do we make disciples? Like, what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, we we just invite people to church on Sunday? Is that the hook? Well, I, I think it used to be. I think it used to be the thing is invite people to Sunday school uh, or invite them to come listen to the preacher and our choir sing because it's beautiful. And and no doubt, it, it probably was beautiful. It probably still is beautiful. 
But is that everything? Does that truly make you a disciple by just showing up on Sunday? Well, I don't think so. Uh, and uh, you probably don't think so either. You know, do we do we just show up on Sunday? Do we just... Is that all that makes us a Christian? Is that all that really makes us a disciple? Or is it things like this Devo that we watch in the mornings or in, and picking up Scripture ourselves and reading it? Is that making us a disciple? Pastor Jack says sometimes in some of his sermons that the Methodists kind of broke the system for a little bit. It, For years, decades actually, it went without ever saying to witness like when you joined the church there was no witness element to it you had no responsibility to do this great commandment other than if you had read this great commandment then you know you would want to do it but we as a church have I, I think kind of failed at this concept of what it means to be a part of the church and and in the last six months or the not last six months I'm sorry the last year or so uh, we have we have kind of gained some of that back. You know, we have, we have, you know, decided that church is this different thing, that church is more than just gathering together on Sunday or gathering together for events, that, you know, church happens in our lives every day. It's in the little relationships that we have uh, with people in our community, uh, not just people that showed up to listen to the same guy or girl preach to us, you know, for 30 minutes. And it's definitely more than the songs. And me being a musician and worship leader uh, type person, that kind of stings a little bit because it ties it to me. It ties it to the thing that I can do. But see, that's not really what the verse is saying here, is it? It's not saying anything that has to do with my ability. It just tells me to go and make disciples of all the nations. Well, that has nothing to do with my music ability or my performance. It has nothing really even to do with my ability to have deep theological conversations with people per se. No, I'm just supposed to go and make disciples in, in all elements of discipleship, not just convincing people to show up one day a week, but have a real and interactive relationship with Jesus Christ, with God, and with the Holy Spirit. So that's, I think, the whole point of this. In a different translation, it says this in the message. It says, Jesus, undeterred, that's an interesting concept, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet far and near. In this way of life, marking them by baptism... That's another concept, marking them by baptism. In the threefold name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them, another element to it, in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. See, I think this really hits home that we aren't just supposed to show up on Sunday. That's not really what makes us disciples. And being a part of a church, like in the books, that doesn't necessarily make you even a follower of Jesus. It makes you part of a group at a church. So we're not really commanded to necessarily grow the church. We're commanded to go make disciples and to teach all the things that Jesus taught his disciples. That's what we're told to do. That's a much more real element to it. Way more involved. So you can't just show up on Sunday. Being a follower and a disciple of Jesus isn't just about showing up on Sunday or, or watching the service, you know, online. Um, it's more than that. It's it's everything to do with Jesus and following His commandment here, which is to go out and make disciples. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And I will see you later. Take care. Bye.